Greetings, I'm Ray. And I'm Kathuris. And we're from Kathuris Labs, where we disassemble our favorite media. And today we're talking about why Sammy is a main character. Yep. Yeah, this is one that we've been wanting to make for a long time. It's a theory that we've been carrying around for literally years at this point. So why not just get it out there? Even though, like, Ruin's coming out, we're just like, we might as well get it out there. Yeah, happy Ruin Eve, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> um, Henry is my favourite character, but uh, my second favourite character, very close, is Sammy. Um, and a lot of people would say that he's not um Yeah, you get people who say he doesn't exist in the games or whatever. And I'm like, no, literally, like, like when we, we, when we read the novels, like, yes, it's foreshadowing, like, Charlie like has like a like a twin or whatever like Charlie bot has like a copy but also like Charlie has a twin and like all of the feelings she has about a twin could potentially be how her twin feels about her yeah. there's a ton of stuff and it was like surely someone who's so important who's like the son of the genius inventor who made the animatronics yeah. Isn't just going to be a wasted character like, oh, he walked out of the sunset and we never saw him again. When I was very first thinking about this, I was like, you know, we'd, we'd figured out a lot of the lore, we'd talked about a lot of it, and uh, we were like, but Sammy, like, what a missed opportunity. He's he's the twin, he's uh, Henry's the son of the founder, a twin, ha like, who in a narrative thing has, like, a twin character and is like, well, we'll just leave that character out. That won't have any important themes. Yeah, we're or... just going to have a twin who just does, uh, like, twin not featured in this Never game. Never going to show up. But but part of his like part of being like a secret character, I think, is part of the character weirdly. So that's probably why. Um, yep, hasn't showed up as much. So this set of slides is pretty long, but there's really oh, yeah. a lot of evidence for Sammy, and that's even with excluding like a large chunk of evidence is, that we had. This is still the Spark Notes version. Yeah, <laughs> this is our very 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 shortened brief. As, as compact we, as we, we took out play, anything that's the biggest interlocked into other theories and just the most factual like here is what we here is what led us to sammy in the first place kind of thing that we could do there's also a long set of like puzzles and counting and weird stuff in the games that uh that i at first like i was like okay this is leads us to sammy but uh also, we decided that was a little maybe yeah. another video. Should, but yeah, there yeah, there might be another video. <laughs> yeah, we'll do another video with the more detailed stuff because it kind of interlocks into other things. It needs more explanation. Whereas we'd rather just get this out so people can start thinking about it. This one we're going to focus on the novels and the frights. We'll talk a little bit about the games, but novels and the frights mainly. Yeah, yeah, and we do see the games, but yeah, we're mostly focusing on those too. So let's see. So what was my first thing? Yeah, so this was the first thing that brought us to Sammy in the first place. So, like, Shock was more, like, enthusiastic about Sammy. Uh -huh. At the start, I was like, oh, I don't know, I don't know, I, I, I know, like, we don't... Like, it wasn't that I didn't think he should be in the games. It was just that I didn't think we had a ton of evidence that he was in the games. Um, but there was a couple of things that really convinced me, and one of them was the troll game for Freddy in Space 2. Um, yeah, so that one was, like... Again, like those people who say, "Oh, the troll games don't matter for me." Like there is lore in the troll games. Like These Scott were made does. By Scott, he was know. made, but made by Scott on his own, exactly the same as he went away and made FNAF Six or whatever. He went away and made this game, and he likes to put little in jokes and whatever in it. The art. Yeah, like obviously the art was he did he did the art at the start and then went yeah. I can't draw, Aww. and then went to like um, Pinky Pills, who some also would argue can't draw but draws better than Scott. You know what I mean? <laughs> I like, I like Pinky's fine, but you know, I mean, you know, I'm saying the fandom in general is critical. He's outsourcing. Yeah, yeah. He he got someone else to do the art, um, but he still oversaw it, and a yeah. lot of it is based on his little pixel scribbles that some of them are still in the game. Yeah. So it wasn't like it just went away and he wasn't involved. Like he was involved. He even made her like he even made her change the this this uh, Freddy in space poster oh, that they did. <laughs> 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 it's like this is too spicy we have to take it down because people got upset about freddy but anyway freddy in space 2 was yeah a charity game for i think was it for st jude's i think so maybe for st jude's he because he does a lot of like cancer children's cancer children's. and children's charity things um and in this game it was given to a bunch of and uh, content creators for FNAF and it was the more points they collected the more money got donated to the hospital so everybody chipped in they spent hours and hours and hours and hours trying to play this game and get the most possible points before they submitted it however there was a secret mechanic in the game so at the start of the game we see Freddy 
um, who's lost his son because his son gets kidnapped by LOL's hacks. And... Locked down the air locker. Yeah, yeah. Gives you a specific <laughs> countdown. Says that he says like he's like ho ho. See if you can get him. But I've actually I've captured the minds of like all of your friends. So good luck. Yeah, he's like yeah. All your friends obey me. So good luck saving your son. And um, you have to do it within thirty minutes. And obviously, people who are working really hard to get every single thing in the entire game were not going to do it in 30 minutes because they wanted to get the stuff for the hospital. People didn't even notice. Like, they got in the end. They're like, look, it's a nice sunset. Gold. Nice. Uh, everybody's there. Nobody is missing. Yeah. No, no characters are Yeah, they got, they got the nice cute end screen and they were like, oh, good. And it was like, yeah. So people try to get the optimal amount of points didn't bother with the 30-minute limit because it didn't matter. You know, they would still get their reward for the kids. However, in order to save those kids, we had to sacrifice his kid. <laughs> And yeah, so like yeah, and also like people are like, oh, that's a bit. Yeah, oh, when that's people finally grim. did the thirty minute end, and they were like, wait, that's Freddy's son. We just let him die. <laughs> we forgot about. <laughs> we forgot about someone. And it was a big important character at the beginning of the game. It set you out. This was your goals. Like yeah, rescue it was like, everybody, go save rescue Freddy's your son. son. And... Yeah, and then everybody was like, finish the game. Like we did it, <laughs> and like the Freddy's son's like, hello. <laughs> yeah, so. That was interesting. Um, also, interestingly, like he has like buck teeth, which is just a random thing, but it is interesting that he has buck teeth. Um, if you've seen our prior prior video, our previous video, um, with your eyes, possibly that could be connected to the cupcake. Yeah, could be. Uh, also, could just mean that it's Freddy and Bonnie's kid, in my opinion, as well, because rabbits. Ah. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, I do think it is linked to like the the are design choices that come up again and again for this character. Um, but yeah, so basically when we saw this, we were like, oh man, everyone forgot his kid again. This is the second time like everyone forgot the kid from the novels, and everyone forgot the kid from Freddy in Space. And I'm like, Scott is making some kind of like stupid joke. A missing about this. piece. A, a secret hidden thing you know a lot of, so you know a lot of uh, people are familiar with the missing victim and, and that would be you know the number of uh victims chica has and chica high school didn't seem to match up with the amount of victims that we knew we had um the uh we had graves in fnaf world and we had too many graves again um just just several indications that we've we've forgotten um a, a missing piece and here is that that theme playing out again we've forgotten something there's a missing child that uh and Henry himself... And this is a child connected to Henry. And yeah. Henry himself seems to forget about Fred, his own son Freddy's a little bit. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Like, in the novels, he's like, who? And he doesn't mention him in uh, Pizza Sim, which I think is a, a, a big thing why a lot of people would say. But we, we think... Um, we, uh, we Honestly, I honestly think Henry has suppressed, has suppressed it as well. Also, for me, like, there's the part where Henry says to specifically to Sammy... Uh, sorry, to Charlie. He says don't talk about his name. They don't talk about Sammy's name and she forgets Sammy's name for a long time. And Henry also has a discussion where he's like, the dead do forget. We don't know if Henry died either. We don't know if Henry forgot his we son. We have another video. Um, uh, yeah, and about... again, like whether you think Henry's dead or not and Pizza Simulator, blah, 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 it doesn't matter. He does seem to have forgotten his son and he does seem to be in some kind of, like, even madness. Like we see at the end of the... the at the end of the novels, he's like, I have lost my mind. Even if I stop this, I would lose my mind. He's mm -hmm. like, overused the illusion disc to the point where he can't tell what's real and what isn't. Mm -hmm. So there's a good chance that he has forgotten his son and that's why he doesn't mention him. Mm -hmm. We just don't know for we just don't know the exact circumstances. But everyone in the fandom seems to have forgotten Sammy and it's a shame because it's such a cool premise. Erased from the time stream. Yeah, he erased from all <laughs> cam lines. If you want, if you read anybody's fan fiction, see anybody's fan for art. Yeah. Um, like nine times out of ten, uh, it's Henry and Charlotte, and that is it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We've seen like fan art of Henry holding his precious daughter, his only and daughter, and you're like, you're like, but that's Sammy. The family portraits. People do all the Aftons. Yeah. All of Henry's. They'll do family. entire fanfic series, and it's all about Henry and his daughter, and it's like, but you have a son. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Like, twins aren't even, like... Uh, 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 oh, it's the worst. He just gets erased. And for people who, like, enjoy the character, we just do not get to see his character. But it's good, it's good. I feel I feel it's canon for him to be yeah, forgotten. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Like, I mean, when you look at stuff like this, it's like, Scott knows that people have forgotten him. Yeah. 
so yeah these are some basic facts about the twins that we know from the novel um that um charlotte says there are charlie um, is talking and about her memories and says there's someone else in the closet with her kneeling down at her own height it was her friend the little boy my little brother um and so he is the younger brother of the two twins and we also get um charlie's birthday in the novels and by that we get um sammy's birthday as well that is may 13th um in 1983 i believe um it, because it's the 13th in 1983 the the year that charlotte dies um possibly probably um it's a Friday the 13th as well, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's, um, like, he's like, I'm nothing if not dramatic. <laughs> um, he's there's, like, there's kills them on the 13th. So there's some discrepancies. I'll just talk about yeah. this real quick. There's some discrepancies in the novels. In the first novel, um, The Silver Eyes, they go to an, a newspaper archive and she searches for when does Sammy die? And she searches between the years 1979 and 1982. Uh, they find the when he dies in 1982. Um in the novels she also thinks that sammy's died and it wasn't really he uh, she had died instead um but and then at the end of the graves on the the last one the fourth closet we see that uh her she's born in the year 1980 which is a describe like obviously you wouldn't be searching in 1979 for somebody that had died you know before they were born so her her memories and the dates are a little screwy and we know that she died on halloween but there's some debate between um 1982 like it says in the first book or 1983 like it says I mean we don't I mean like again like you're making leaps like how do we know she died on Halloween like we know that there was a Halloween party Halloween parties don't oh, no, always no, she, happen um the uh the newspaper article but that says the kids missing disappeared is uh, November 1st as a child snatched all right so that's when they noticed they're yeah. missing so it is yeah because we do see the flashback with their parents as like their mother is a princess but I wasn't sure like exactly how we knew exactly what date that was but yeah if it's reported the next day then that makes sense yeah but it was again reported in 1982, so we don't know what the discrepancy is here. If Scott decided, and later, it does like, appear to be like a, a late night, like Halloween party for the adults. Like again, he like leaves him in a closet the whole yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, he leaves him in a closet the whole time. He's like, he's like, the kids are fine. We'll let them play in the cupboard. We'll just, it's like a playpen, but with like musty old suits in it, and they stick the suits in their mouth. God, oh. The mom visits them and is like, "Well, you guys are still in the closet." Shuts the door. Yeah, she's like, like, "Oh, like she's like, good night, kids." Tucks them in in the cupboard. <laughs> this obviously differentiates from what we see in the game. In the game, Char uh, Charlotte gets um, thrown out in the rain by bullies. Yeah. Um, who lock the door on her, and then William kills her outside. Um, in the in the novel, she is snatched. And to be fair, possibly. I think the games is continuing through that thread of bullying. Because yeah. we have Mike, the bully, and whatever, and she is bullied in turn, you know. But and, and even despite that, she seems to not blame Mike either, you know. So there's a lot of bullying. We get the impressions. The Henry Henry is a nerd, and he's weird, and his children are also weird nerds. Um, Charlie and the Charlie in the books is an absolute champ. Like she's just hilarious. Yeah. They they wrote her really well. Yeah. Because she is so awkward, like the the dates with John. I, I hate young adult novel dating stuff, but it's really really funny to me <laughs> the way she interacts with John. So I'm I'm all for. He like he like Charlie. stretches to put his ha arm over her hand. She's like, "What are you doing? Um, do you not have enough space in your seat?" And he's like, um. and then like two minutes later, she comes back and puts his arm around her, and then she's like, "Get it over with." And he's like, "What?" And she's like, "Oh, sorry, I was having a flashback to something." She else. was talking about the movie. She was like, I "I'm tired of the the plot about the zombies." And he's like, "The what?" She's like, she's, like, they just need to, she's like, "They need." to just burn them all and yeah yeah she's like she's like why didn't they all gather them in one location and destroy every single zombie and i'm like that's the henry yeah. speaking <laughs> but yeah so yeah so sammy's the younger twin we definitely see them as twins in the novels um yeah pretty much and that's the dates that we're aware of with them along with like the slight discrepancies mm -hmm. so in the novel in the in the novels we also see a really important scene where mm. we're introduced to how like spring locks work at first it's our first expeditional kind of description of how a spring lock goes off and it's henry showing the twins um so it's do you want me to read this bit or do you want you me to read it? yeah so it's just she was sitting with sammy in the restaurant before it opened for the day they were under a window in a dusty beam of light, playing some invented game she could no longer remember, and their father came over grinning. He had something to show them. He held up the piece of twisted metal and showed them how it opened, then let it snap back in his hand. They both cried out in surprise, then started giggling and clapping their hands. Their father did it again. I could snap off your nose, he said. 
And again they laughed, but quickly his face turned serious. I mean it, he said. This is a spring lock. And I want you to know how it works because it's very dangerous and I don't ever want you touching these. This is why we never put our hands in the animal costumes. It's very easy to trigger these if you don't know what you're doing and you could get hot. It's like touching the stove. Do we ever touch the stove? They shook their heads with a solemnity beyond their years. Good, because I want you both to grow up with all your noses, he cried, and he swept them up, one in each arm, swinging them around as they laughed. Suddenly there was a loud snap. So the loud snap wakes Charlie up, obviously. But, so this is interesting because it's also, it also shows, again, how unhinged a parent Henry is. He's the best. He's like, <laughs> he's like, look, this is fun, isn't it, kids? He's like, don't ever do this. <laughs> And they're like, ha, 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 okay. Yeah, Henry's great. He's like, okay, well, as we all know, I've told the children not to touch the dangerous objects. Yeah. So they won't. Thanks. That's it. He's like, I gave them an instruction. I showed them how fun they were. And then I told them not to do it. <laughs> as you do. You go, look at this fun thing, kids. Don't you want to do this? They go, yeah. You go, well, don't ever do that. We never go there. <laughs> so, yeah, that's good Good parenting skills there. That's definitely going to work. They're definitely not going to touch So, them. the th important thing about this scene. Yep. So the important thing about this scene is that it also ties into a figure that we see in FNAF 4, um, where he's introduced the kids to this as a sort of plaything and a warning, and then seems to want to drive it home. And then in FNAF 4, in one of the mini games where we walk home as a crying child, we meet this kid. And this kid has what he calls his spring bonnie. He's like, I've got a spring bonnie. Um, he's got spring locks in him. He's a, he's a finger trap. His... Like He's like, my daddy says I will get hurt. Yeah. So, basically, this is paralleled to that scene. That, st that scene, like, 100%. We've got a kid with a toy that has, like, a weak spring lock in it to warn him not to get hurt by touching spring locks inside the big animatronics or it's whatever. It's interesting. You know, the crying child's toy is obviously... He's like, where is it? And his is the Fred Bear toy. And this kid and has it also, the like, toy. also presumably means that this is where Charlie learned to disengage the spring locks. Because we see that Charlie knows how to disengage the spring locks in the in the novel itself. She yeah. knows how to do them. Yeah. But her and her he brother... Gave him, he gave them to them as a yeah, toy. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Because like like presumably her and her brother have never worn the suits. So where yeah. did she learn how to disengage the spring locks? So if they had a toy with like a mild spring lock in it, they would learn how to fiddle with it like a like a finger puzzle mm -hmm. and disengage, re-engage, whatever. Mm -hmm. So that's what I think but these toys are. What an odd toy as well to give to the child. I know, it's a terrible toy. <laughs> Absolutely terrible. And it's almost as big as he is. Mm -hmm. But again, we also think that, yeah, like William gives his kid Fred Bears. Mm -hmm. And Henry gives his kids rabbits because we've got Theodore. Theo and the not yeah, that's the first friend. He's like, you know, I don't want you to be alone. And, and it's makes... almost sweet that the two of them are like, if I had to give someone a friend, who would I give them? And they give the opposite. Yeah. Like, but yeah, so he has his spring bonnie. Um, yeah. And the interesting thing about this character is he has a counterpart. Um, in this cutscene. So well, and, well, yeah, mini game cutscene, whatever. If you go along the path and go off the path, you come to a play area. She can mi you can miss her and not talk to her. Yeah, you can totally play. miss her entirely if you just walk straight along the road the way you think you should. You won't ever see her. But if you go up, then you run into her and she's in a swing park with like like a, a seesaw and two swings and whatever. And the reason why I'm calling her she is because she has the. The cartoony universal feminine bow symbol might not be female, but that's that's the we've slapped a bow on it. It's probably a girl, and we've given her a pink shirt. Like gender norms, let's go. But mm -hmm. yeah, so we don't know what gender this person is, but I'm just making the assumption that she, because Scott has slapped as many signifiers as he possibly can in a pixel game. <laughs> um, so she's interesting because. She has a minus on her shirt. It's either a minus, a hole, a line, a stripe. It could be anything. Yeah. But it's a disconnected stripe if it's a stripe. Um, and she has toys. And she literally says, like, to the to the player, like, like, why are you so sad? Don't you like my toys or whatever? Mm -hmm. Like, she's like, it's fine. Um, also, I think her face is very reminiscent of the puppet's face. Like, she has the same kind of smile, the same kind I of line so. eyes. Um, and if you compare her to the other one, he has his eyes open and she has her eyes closed. She's kind of a conductor. She seems to be presiding over the... Uh, She's he posing for dominance. Well, yeah. 
That's <laughs> but yeah, so she has a set of toys, and the reason why we call them toys especially is because they look like the toy animatronics. You know, Scott pointed this out in one of his special like hints about the lore. Um, toy Chica is missing her beak. Yeah. Um, which means that those are specifically the toy animatronics in 1983. Yeah. Um. Yep. So this is them overlaid just to show how similar the two of them are. Like we're not just saying these two are twins for no reason. Like, literally, they can be overlaid. Um, let me see. Same suit shoes on, same colours. Same trousers. Same eye colours. Same eye colour. Their hair's a little bit different. But... Their hair's different. Their skin colour is minutely different, um, but very, very similar. Like, if you if you, if you colour pick it, it's minutely apart, but it doesn't, not, not any significant distance. It could just mean one's out in the sun more, one isn't. Uh, the pixels aren't exact, so actually if you colour pick like from different points on the skin, it'll all be slightly different. Yeah, yeah, on that's the same, fair. Yeah, because like, Scott 3D modelled these pixels yes. because he's an absolute maniac. Yes. Rather than them just being 3D like mo 3D pixels, like you can kind of see he 3D modelled all of them. Like they're all they're 3D pixel <laughs> characters because Scott is insane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's also interesting is there are symbols. She has the minus or whatever you want to think that is. He has a heart. And it's not a very good heart, but it's a heart. He's got like a, a wonky heart. But yeah, the heart on the chest almost looks like a bleeding heart, but that that could just be Scott's hearts? bad at drawing hearts. We think hearts are an important symbol um, in FNAF. Um, and I think they connect to the vengeful spirit. Um, the, you know, Andrew... Um, we see it recurringly. I mean, mo one of the most recent stories is called Bleeding Heart. Yeah. Like, and he turns into a heart. He is left as nothing but a heart. Yeah. And and, and we have the heart pendant, where people are constantly giving of the heart pendant. There is something to do heart with heart. Heart pendant, yeah. Buntrap has a big clump of, like, flesh inside his chest yeah, his that looks like, a looks like a heart. Yeah, and he has a heartbeat even when he shouldn't have one. There's just there's a lot of like implications of hearts. But when the scientist is assembling um the stitch wraith, um he says I you know he has the he uses Jake's um the Simon doll plush head for his like you know for his like scarecrow for his brains and then for, for fetch he digs the little battery out of its chest and compares it directly to a heart and he says you know I need a heart and he puts that into the stitch wraith. So um yeah they're just yeah. a little heart theme. And um, so just to show again that the twins are similar, um, there's and very diverse shapes in the in the mini game itself mm -hmm. for different characters. They're intentionally similar, um, so it's not like an accidental thing. Scott has intentionally made the two of them similar because he strives to make the other kids look different in this particular mini game. Um, and also both of them, yeah, seem to have some kind of prototype. Just to say as well, real quick, you know, when we're talking about, you know, just like gender norms and things, a heart is an odd uh, symbol for a boy to have. Um, yeah, yeah. But, especially... if heart, but if heart is an ominous, yeah, you know, it's important. Yeah, if you're going by like gender stereotypes, like a boy wearing a heart seems odd, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's symbolic or whatever. Um, yeah. But again, obviously, I don't believe that yeah. one thing. Yeah, it's just, we're just like going by stereotypical, the most stereotypical thing you possibly Some can. Graphic. Shorthand. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So um, these to these toys do feel out of place in the game, strictly because we do not see their animatronic counterparts in the game itself. We even see an ad for Freddy's, and it appears to be it's the original designs for like Freddy, Bonnie, Chica. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like Fredbear and Friends because it seems to be that they're introducing Fredbear's new friends at that point, which is the other the other animatronic. Yeah. The kids wear masks for the other animatronics. So yep. we see at this point. So there is, there is a slow roll, yeah, of like possibly. merchandising possibly, but this girl is like ahead of even that potentially, you know, like or mm -hmm. getting some kind of other experimental thing that they're working on or whatever. We don't know. Yep. Um. So just to summarize, they do appear to be Sammy and Charlotte for me because we only have one set of twins that seem to come up again and again. Um, also Sammy referring to his prototype type thing coming from his daddy yeah. which would be Henry um, because again we're playing as a crying child who lives with P Afton you know yeah. like and they we see Mike know each other yeah and they even have diff distinct skin colours you know what I mean like yeah. like, like, like Scott determinedly sets them apart in every way he can mm -hmm. you know um, yeah so that and the fact that the prototypes would come from their father makes sense and that would be why the girl has the strange toys that don't quite line up with the merchandising at that time. So that's why we think these two are Sammy and Charlotte pretty much. 
Uh, so the frights have tons of things. So the so I was like, okay, maybe about the the twins mm-hmm. when she first proposed it in that mini game. I was like, okay, maybe, fair enough. But when the frights showed up and we started reading the frights, I was like, really clear. There is a character here who isn't accounted for anywhere else, and they come up repeatedly over and over and over, and there are thematic things that Scott hammers on over and over and over, and I was like okay and then i read the breaking wheel and i was like okay i'm on board with yeah. your with your theory now <laughs> we, like, we, we went through each of the series because yeah, I'm, not... I'm intensely skeptical yeah i'll consider theories as possible but i won't accept them as really probable unless they have a lot of weight of evidence and legs under them and just from some pixels i'm very skeptical of pixel theories so when people are like oh look this is a one pick this is a different hex code so it means it's a different pick. i'm like no like I I don't I don't get don't get by with that. Um, but the frights I was like, there's a character here. Like unquestionably, he is trying to establish this character and give us information about this character. So for the first frights for the first series, um, Sammy is I think pretty easy to identify, and that's because we we have such a scant amount of information about him. Scott, some of the other characters are a little bit tougher. Like you know, you're like, ah, who is this? Who are we dealing with? Scott, at least for this character, you know, he's like, we have such so little information to begin with. Um, so it keeps it keeps it pretty simple. Uh, twins and twin characters. There are quite a few of those. We'll we'll be going over those. Um, the uh, characters literally named Sam. Um, that's that's again I think just because he doesn't always do that. But yeah, he, um, usually usually I find that when he puts a, a name a, per, a name for the game, he's linking the story back to the games. Like you might have ones that actually have Dave, that actually have Bill, that actually have whatever. Yeah, and I think it's a pay attention normally. Yeah. Um, but in this case, I think the character's so obscure, he was just like, forget it. Yeah, he's like, no <laughs> one's gonna know that, and no one did. You know, no one noticed it. No one yeah. said anything about it, and it's been killing us for ages. But. <laughs> So, um, yeah, there are characters literally named Sam who appear to be Sammy parallels. Yeah. And the last theme, of course, is uh, crows. And this one is one that pro- probably isn't as obvious as the other two themes, but it comes up a lot, and we'll, we'll talk about that first. Yeah, um, it comes up. It comes up constantly. And G-G-Y, we even have it in the... There's a trailer for the movie, which the original leaked trailer has been cut from the most recent one. It's not a spoiler. There's just literally a, a shot of a crow um, that appears, like literally in the middle of the the flash flashing of the yeah. the ghost kids in the trailer. There was we'll, a flash we'll, of a crow. We'll show you. We'll show you. Um, but we won't, I won't show you that. I'm not going no, 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 to post the, the trailer we'll show at you all. Where they come from? Yeah, yeah. But we'll why show you where all this from? and why we're so alert to whenever crows show up at this point. And um, we even have crow cawing um i mean there's stuff in here that i didn't even put in like um in fnaf 4 there is a black feather yeah there's a black feather in the files um there's cawing in the background we hear repeatedly yeah, in different games you FNAF know worlds um, we hear it in fnaf world we hear it in other games as well um so crows are very present they're always present um and if you pay attention for them you'll find them everywhere like once you start looking for them you're like wow these are everywhere um, but we're going to stick to mostly the frights just now and just go through... Novels first. Um, novels and well, well, the books. To show you. Yeah, the books. We'll go through the books and we'll show you like where we first got the idea and then where we see it there from. So the first place that they show up is in the novels. In the Silver Eyes. Um, uh, and and it's not just a random throwaway scene. These are the capstone scenes of the the novel. Very last. This is the very last paragraph. So of the, the novel. last paragraph the no- of the, the novel. Book. It's it's the thing that he wants to draw our attention to, which is here is the final scene of this book. What is important in this scene? And it's like it's a it's an interaction between Henry and his daughter, and it involves a crow. And it's when Charlie visits the graves. Yep. Uh, do you want to read this one? Sure. There was a telephone pole set just inside the fence, barely on the cemetery grounds, and beside it there were two headstones, plain and small. Charlie stared at it for a long moment, not moving. She tried to conjure up the right feeling, grief and loss, so that she could mourn. Instead, she just felt a numbness. The graves were there, but the sight did not touch her. She took a deep breath and started towards them. It was such a small memory, one of those moments that meant nothing at the time, just one day in a series of days, the same as all the others. They were together, just the two of them, and it must have been before everything, before Fred Bears went wrong, before anyone was dead. 
They were sitting out back behind Fred Bears, looking over the hills, and a crow landed and began pecking in the dirt, looking for something. There was something about its sharp, darting moments that struck her as the funniest thing she had ever seen. Charlie began to laugh, and her father looked at her. She pointed, and he turned his head, trying to see as she did, but he could not tell what she was pointing at. She could not get it across to him. She did not know the words. And just as her excitement was about to turn to frustration, he saw it too. Suddenly, he laughed and pointed at the crow. Charlie nodded, and he met her eyes, looking at her with an expression of pure, boundless delight, as if it would fill him to bursting. Oh, Charlotte, he said. Yeah, and even that, as if it would fill him to bursting, that's the opposite of this, the letter he sends to Jen, where he says, your, her eyes, your eyes have emptied me. Yeah. And then we also have the old Charlotte, which we see mirrored later on in another story. So, very last scene. Yeah. She visits the grave. She does not notice that it's her own grave here. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's, she's like, she's like so it doesn't look like type. anything to me. Yeah, doesn't look like anything to me. And they're like, didn't you visit the grave? She's like, ah. So I just um, looked at it and then I thought about a crow. But yeah, definitely, like, crow. She looks at a crow. She's like, look at this crow. And, and Henry's time, like, what are you looking at? At the time, she thinks she's visiting Sammy's grave as yeah. well. Sammy and Henry's graves. Um, But it's, as we find out later, it's Charlotte and Henry's grave. Yeah. So she's like, look, it's a crow. Mm-hmm. And he's like, ah. And we're like, look, it's a crow. You know, the reader is forced. associates crows with Charlotte's death. And yeah, yeah. Uh, that means that it's a it's a precious moment to her and crows are precious to her and Henry. Mm-hmm. Because for Henry, this would be a moment with his daughter who he lost, you know. Yeah. So crows are important from this point. Um, but they come back, you know, the very final scene of the fourth closet which is the final novel in the trilogy yeah this is the last scene so the final version we literally have again the graveyard and it's a warm gust of wind rolled over the cemetery as they walked away together the trees rustled and a rush of leaves blew across the stones sticking to some beneath the telephone pole the grass rolled with waves brushing against the two stones that sat together in the setting sun the first was henry's the other read beloved daughter charlotte emily 1980 1983 from the telephone pole above, a crow cawed twice, then launched itself into the sky with a flurry of wings. Last sentence. The last sentence of the last novel is the crow, and it cawed twice. Mm-hmm. So, like, it, again, this is not a mistake. We have the crow. The crow is present at the end of the first novel, and then is the capstone at the end of the third novel. It is the final scene, the final thing that we see. And for anybody who's done any kind of literary anything, the first sentences and the last sentences in a book are important and an author puts weight on them. Any author that's been writing for a long time knows that this is where you tie your themes, this is where you give them a part and image of this novel to take with them. It's not a throwaway like, oh, Charlie like Charlie walked down the street and saw a crow. It's literally, this crow leaves... And we said earlier we see crows, you know, you see crows in a lot of places, but actually, like, um, by that we mean, like, in precise places. Yeah. Scott's precise about when the it's crows It's not just, are like, introduced. random crows everywhere. We don't. If they you tend up... to be in very important spots. I mean, like, in FNAF World, they're in the graveyard again, so those crows. Mm-hmm. You know, like, it just seems to be that Scott very intentionally places them around. He wants to link these two themes together. And but yeah, but they're in all different uh, stories as well. So another example is the new kid, where basically just to give a summary of the new kid, not to give like the whole story, but the main characters in it are Devin and Mick, and they're best friends, and they're kind of oddballs, and they're kind of ostracized a little bit, mm-hmm. and they hang around together like one of those nineties movies where you've got two kind of off the off the tracks kind of friends or whatever. Yeah. And Mick is kind of overweight and Devin's kind of sullen and emo and whatever. But both of them are very paralleled with Henry and William because they want to make so. they they want to make their own little world. They have their own den, the little clubhouse that they've made together. Mm-hmm. Um but it's 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 exploring their changing relationship in a lot of ways as well. Um but this scene is critical because this scene again ties us back to Crows. Mm-hmm. And also, if we take Devin as potentially a William analog, Devin is gives strongly William yeah. vibes for a lot of reasons. He's very, there's a like, lot of different reasons for it. We don't even have time to go into how many there are, but the Nick might be Henry, might be Mike. Yeah, we don't know. He's of... kind of a lackey character mm-hmm. for Devin, yeah. who's horrified by what happens. Um, but this scene ties Devin to the killing of a crow. Yeah, 
um, which if we take the twins as the crows, makes sense because William kills Charlotte. Um, so do you want me to read this? Yeah, you, sure, yeah. I'll read this. So Mick saw it happen. They were strolling along the fur needle padded for, forest floor. I can't, forest floor. Too Scottish to say that. And Devon was juggling three stones as they went. The crow sat juggling on a high. As well. Yeah, juggling. Which yeah. we see uh, Spring Bonnie juggling in the novels. Yep. Yeah, we literally have that scene where Spring Bonnie's on the stage juggling. The crow sat on a high branch above their heads. It had cawed when they approached the tree it was in. Mick had looked up at it as they passed. As they passed beneath it, the crow flicked its tail feathers, and a big white splotch appeared on Devon's shoulder and sank with a squishy splatting sound. Mick started to laugh, but then inhaled sharply as Devon instantly let loose one of the stones he carried, sending it streaking like a missile towards the crow. The stone hit the crow with a stomach-churning thwack, and the crow tumbled in what seemed like slow motion to the ground. It landed a few feet in front of them. While Mick tried to process what had just happened, Devon gestured at the clearly dead bird. If you want it, a wing would make a better fan, Devon said. Mick stared at the bird. The forest started to spin around him and he stumbled back, bracing himself against a tree. So, like, Devin doesn't even doesn't even register that what he's done is heinous because they're playing a game where the lo- he says, right, fan, and they have to try and find objects that resemble a fan. And he's just like, look, there's a wing, take it. And obviously, like, he doesn't even realise the gravity of the murder that he's just committed. Devin's done a few weird things throughout, and Mick sort of, like, brushes it off. But at this moment, Mick feels pretty sick about yeah. this. this. And Mick can't really recover from this. He's kind of put off by this the whole time. Mm-hmm. Like, he, he goes to school and he's troubled by that's it. that's later. That's... No, no, but, I mean, he is. he's still kind of troubled by it. Like he, And then it gets worse, obviously, when... Um, they... It's a kind of a. It's obviously a foreshadowing of things to come as well. Yeah, basically they end up like they have a friend that comes with them to Freddy's and gets they they trap them in a gold like a Fred Bear suit, golden Freddy suit. Yeah, we'll get, that's the next quote as well. Yeah, yeah. because crows are involved with that. Yeah, too. so the crows are involved. Um, yeah, but uh, this is weird. It's a weird foreshadowing. Yeah. So um, they've just, so what's happened is um, uh, Devin sent Mick away to go like fetch something and then kind of tricks Kelsey to get into the uh, Fred Bear suit. Yeah, he's like, try it on, this will be funny. Um, And Kelsey starts dancing a little, the spring locks go off, Um, he screams, you know, Mick comes back like, what happened? Did you kill him? And he's like, no, 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 it was an accident. So yeah, um, this is them deciding what to do about it. Uh, This is Devin speaking. We can't undo what happened, he said. We, Mick objected. You make it sound like I was part of it. I wasn't part of it. Okay, me, I, I can't undo it. So from here, we have a choice. Either we tell and go to jail, or we don't tell, and I don't go to jail. Either way, Kelsey is the same. I wish I hadn't done it. I'm sorry, very, very sorry, but that doesn't help Kelsey. Me going to jail doesn't help him either. You're saying we should leave him. Mick's voice was hushed. Devin took a deep breath and let it out. Yes, that's what I'm saying. For at least a minute, the boy stood there. Outside, a crow called. Another answered. Yeah. And also, this is clearly like, again, you can see where we're coming from with the parallels between William and Henry. Mm -hmm. Because this is the, like, what did you do? Oh, I, I like I just a mistake. You know, there's no point. Like I can't fix it if I go ex- to jail. This is an excruciating conversation. It's pretty d- damning. Mm-hmm. I would say for whoever it involves, if it involves Mike or Henry. Yeah. This is a conversation where uh, they're, they're saying, "What have you done?" And he's saying, "And what well, we and can't, what are we like, gonna do?" He's like, "Well, mm-hmm. if we tell the police, then I go to jail. That doesn't solve anything." Mm-hmm. Which presumably, like, he tries to fix things. But, you know, I mean, again, he's like, you need to let me try and fix things. You need to cover for me. You need to no comment it. We know Henry no commented. Yeah. Because literally, one second. But, yeah. um, So, we got a little bit interrupted there. But, yeah, it is very, very damning, this entire thing. Um, Whoever he's talking to. Yeah. Because it means that they kind of tolerate it. Like, because in the end, Mick... Does ca- he hates him. it? It destroys him. It leaves him hollowed out and sad and miserable. But he does cover for Devin. They have a in it together moment. They're like, you know, no matter what happens, we're in it together. And so yeah, and he's like, we have to leave him. But the crows, the crows are also interesting because at this moment, so Kelsey has been killed. Presumably, we see later that Kelsey is something else. 
Yeah, yeah, we don't know what what's yeah. And this, this is part of and this is part of a you know trick. Lure, he lure, later Devin comes back and gets trapped in the suit himself. Yeah, but here we see two crows calling, um, which is interesting. There's two crows, yeah. um, which is the first time we see. Yeah, the two of them two. having a conversation about what to do about this. Yeah, which is interesting. So. Yeah, and and it's, and it's like this happened, and, and then Freddy story. Yeah, and we see these crows have this conversation. Mm -hmm. And then Devin comes back and gets like vengeance wreaked yeah. upon him, yeah. you know. So, but yeah, this bit was interesting because the crows were interesting. And um, this story has so much, so much in it that is so relevant. Like, I mean, again, like, there's no way you can read this this conversation about but, I have done something terrible. What do we do about it, it without being like this is potentially a conversation that was had relative to the mothers? Of but the it kids. wasn't the story that people expected. No. Um, to in order to talk about Golden Freddy, it's an odd story. Um, but yeah, yeah, crows are important here. So, and obviously we have crows and Blackbird because they discuss crows specifically in Blackbird. So again, I think it's important. Um, a lot of people are like everything's in the same timeline. Blah blah blah. I'm not even going to go into that. As far as I'm concerned, all of the books are alternate universe. All in all, the universe situations Close. that cast light on the main line of games. For when I'm talking about it, that's what I'm talking about, pretty mm -hmm. much. So I think it's important that Blackbird has a different bird that is adjacent to Good those crow. birds. Yeah. And Scott specifically talks about it in this scene. So they just, so basically in Blackbird at this point, the two characters are discussing. They want to make a horror movie for their class. The characters are Sam and Nolan here. You know, you probably noticed the character is literally named Sam, the yeah. protagonist of the story, and you're going to see why that's important. as Yeah, well. literally called Sam, and they're discussing whether they should what they should use for their monster, their their monster that will make people tell their sins. Mm -hmm. In the the horror movie, and already you can see why this applies. You know, like we have William in Ultimate Custom Night, who is tormented. Is this related to that? And that's where we go for there. Um. So, Sam returned to the problem. Oh, I've got it. He sat up and said in a solemn, ominous tone, "Once upon a midnight dreary, huh? Oh, come on, you're not that much of an idiot. I might be." Quoth the Raven. Sam prompted, "Huh? Oh, wait. I know this. That poem by the scary dude, Poe." Oh, a raven. Yeah, only no, not quite. The raven obviously is cliché. A crow would be too. I'm thinking of a blackbird. It has the same connotation, but blackbirds are a little smaller. They're songbirds, and we actually have more of them in our area than we do crows or ravens. So rather than just having them come up with a blackbird, specifically Scott has them consider crows and ravens and say, Nah, let's not do those, let's do this. But in doing so, links the two of them together because they get brought up together. Yeah. Noel's a bit, and you can see kind of their interplay, Noel's a bit of like a jock um, yeah. kind of character. He, you know, he, he's not he's not bad, but he's he's a little bit... He's also not as stupid as he, like, acts. to be. Like, they're like, he's like, he's have... like, what? And then he's like, yeah, I know, Edgar Allan Poe wrote this. Poem. They have a bit of, a, <laughs> yeah, back and forth, you know, about, like, you know, Sam being this kind of nerd... Genius. And again, we get that tied to, we specifically have Quoth the Raven brought up, which is a story about a man tormented by his, like, yeah. his own conscious, you know, like, like the, 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 the raven in the raven is a supernatural thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's an embodiment of something. So again, we have that laid out, like, this is what we might be talking about is something to do with... Scott references other literature. Yeah, and we see that, we, and, and this and is just, it's just set in the scene, because this is in the very first pages of the story. Where it's saying this might be a story about torment, it might be a story about guilt, it might be a story about. But here about too, it whatever. sets aside like this is essentially a parallel, you know, like as far as like um, you know, it's not about crows. This is a story about a blackbird, but we know it's about crows. Yeah. So. And yeah, so literally in this 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 is the one where we see a specifically a parallel line between Ultimate Custom Night. So again, just to recap, in Ultimate Custom Night, the is it mediocre mediocre melodies mm -hmm. have voice lines that are in character for them and then they have an incongruous line in there somewhere where it's someone as if someone's possessing them with an extra voice overlaid over their own, like right. a whisper. And Happy Frog has one that's like, I've only just begun, I'll never let you leave, I will never let you rest. Mm -hmm. So when we read this pa this paragraph from Blackbird, we were like, wow, look, it's literally that line that's in yeah. there. 
Our animatronic, the Blackbird, Sam gave the name finger quotes, will get you to confess your darkest secrets. And then when you do, it comes to punish you for your sins. It never lets you off the hook, never lets you rest. You know, the Blackbird basically hounds some poor dude to death. <laughs> yeah, well, again, this is like, we see there's, there's a whole story again for people who haven't read the novels called The Man in Room 1280. Numbers? Yeah, yeah 1280. Uh, it's basically William Afton. Just William Afton. Literally William Afton, named as such, being tormented relentlessly by a vengeful spirit. In this case, it's Andrew. Yeah. Um, but we think that, that instead of Andrew literally being the character, um, there are hints at the other frights, like the actual identity. Yeah. Andrew um, doesn't have enough meat on his bones as a character to really be the vengeful spirit. He's kind of angry. It's like, spirit. why is he angry? If we think, you know, Sammy. We don't find out why he's angry. We don't know why he's even mad at William Afton. You know, we don't find out anything about him. So like he definitely Jake, feels like a placeholder. Jake gets a whole backstory. And a whole resolution. Like, Millie gets a backstory and a resolution. Um, Andrew and Andrew gets not. nothing. It's like, he's why very, are you mad? He's like, I don't know. Yeah, he's a very kind of um, flat, brief character. Um, and we think that's because he's a stand-in for um, this character. Not Cassidy, um, but Sammy. Yeah, this like the Sammy Vengeful Spirit. Because um, Sammy has a reason to be mad. He has a backstory. He has a connection to the franchise. He's had his life ruined. And utterly. in these books, we get like explicit reason. You know what I mean? Like, like when you confess, you torment the person. No. We'll hound them to death. No. You know, and it literally links it to the voice and Happy Frog in this line. But there are even more links. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. But I mean, this is just a very clear link, you know, yeah, very yeah. visual link. Like Scott wrote the lines for Ultimate Custom Night, mm -hmm. and he wrote this line as well. Mm -hmm. You know, so this is just a really clear way of seeing the links between the two. Um, this is one of my favorite passages. Do you want to read this one then? Sure, or, yeah. sure. Yeah. A few hours later, he put the finishing touches on the costume, attaching to the head two beady yellow and black eyes and a tiny pointed orange beak. Even though he was exhausted, he donned the suit and stood in front of the full-length mirror behind the bathroom door. Sam nearly shrieked when he saw himself, because what he was looking at wasn't him anymore. It was so not him, he was tempted to tear off the suit and find himself again. He felt like his creation had assimilated him. He'd been transformed. He couldn't see any part of Sam. All he saw was a monster-sized blackbird. His design had come out just how he'd envisioned it. The oversized proportions made the suit look almost kid-friendly, but the wide, dead eyes and dripping midnight feathers were deeply unsettling. He had no doubt that poor Floyd, the character in their movie, would seriously regret his dark secrets when he came face-to-face -face with the blackbird. Yeah. And again, like, the blackbird is not described as, like, a cute character in this. The, the, he is described like a creature of agony. And even he is scared of what he's become. Yeah. Sam, but this is very interesting to me. This is very important because Sam creates this character. He's sewed it all together. He thought of the concept of it. Mm -hmm. He made it personally. And then he and then he's like, it. And then he's like, what am I? Like, I am actually terrifying. He's like, maybe I should go back. Because there is, there is some implication that potentially the vengeful spirit has gone too far into the act of Punisher. It's, you know, like, he's 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 he's, hurt, he's he's punishing people for their sins or whatever, but we do get a feeling that at some point he maybe went too far in Ultimate Custom Night or whatever. It's interesting to me as well because um, in the um, original story, we kind of, we, you know, I was undecided. Like, is he actually Nightmare? Is he actually the Shadows? Or um, are these creations of his that he's kind of put forward? And the story's a little ambiguous about it. But what we do see is oftentimes... So I think one of the things that we see in the frights and the tales is if like you can engage with the agony, with the agony creatures, with the nightmares, mm -hmm. and it might be fun for a little while, but they ultimately like consume you. Yeah. Like Whatever this dark Take energy is, it consumes you in the end. Like the only... Like, like the character in... Um, Hide and seek. Is it hide and seek? Yeah, hide and seek, the one with the game and Shadow Bonnie. Yeah. He ends up being consumed by it and the only way out is to basically kill himself. Sea Bonnie is literally consumed. Yeah. So like any time you kind of tangle with this, it seems to really escalate and grow and whatever. So we don't know if something happened to Sammy that created some kind of agony element and he used it like I am powerful to punish people, but the agony gets too like too extensive, you know, it corrupts things, it changes things. Um, but yeah, we can see here, even Sam is a little bit scared of what he's created at this point. Yeah. And it separates the two, you know, like, it, 
Yeah, yeah like also, the bit where he's like, I want to tear it off and find myself again. Yeah, you know, like as if line. he's lost in it. Yeah. And then, yeah, so this is once. So what happens is Sam is creating this costume, they're working together, they have an argument at their, like, their studio. Basically, like, no, um, no, yeah, no is saying, like, ha ha, I used to bully people, it was really funny, I was, a, I was really hilarious, and Sam's like, I was bullied by people, and that's not okay. Yeah. And Noel's like, huh? And Sam just, he's like, we can deal with this tomorrow, we can work tomorrow, I can't deal with you right now, and leaves. They ask about their dark secrets. Yeah. Um, in this scene. Um, and Sam says he doesn't have any secrets, and he's lying. Yeah. And Noel says, um, I used to... Yeah, I used to be a bully and it was really funny. And I think he mentions that he used to... Was it the girl he used to bully? Name's Christine. Yeah, yeah. He used to bully Christine and he's like, ha, it was funny. And Sam's like, I can't even with you right now and leaves, basically. Yeah. Um, and then Noel's... And so Sam leaves and the next day he finds out Sam was hit by a train. Yeah. Um, and everybody's panicking about it. But they can't find his body. They just find a trail of feathers by the train. Blood. And blood. And they think he's dead. He's crawled off somewhere to die. Um, so Noel is eaten alive by guilt and starts to see the blackbird everywhere. So he starts to be consumed by the blackbird, um, and that's what this is about. Um, so Noel was seeing Sam in the blackbird costume, and Sam was stalking Noel. Why was Sam stalking Noel? It was obvious, wasn't it? Sam was stalking Noel because he was now the blackbird, and the blackbird tortured those who confessed their dirty secrets. So first Sam was going to toy with Noel the same way a bully toyed with his victim and then Sam was going to kill Noel for being such a horrible person. Noel was sure of it. And the worst part was that Noel deserved it. And so this is a, another line, the one down here. Yep. So this is just him reflecting on, you know, he's like, yeah, um, I, he's pretty sorry. Noel's pretty sorry. We think that Noel represents Mike. Again, he's kind of a, a bully and a jock character, but he's not Sam's bully. Um, we find no, out no, later yeah, that he didn't Sam, bully Sam. Sam was bullied in the past, and um, yeah, it and wasn't him. Noel is not. Responsible. And so basically, like we see the blackbird, he sees him in the waking world, but he's also beset with really intense nightmares about the blackbird. Yeah, which well, room at man room one two eight zero? Um, the vengeful spirit torments William with relentless nightmares, nightmares. and in FNAF four. Um, and even the name nightmare, like nightmare, major, like, yeah, nightmare. He's interlinked with nightmares. It was also interesting to me in the previous one that he stood in front of the full-length mirror when he looked at himself because mirrors are also an element that's associated with nightmare. Oh, yeah. I am the twisted reflection and all that. Like, oh, yeah. um, but yeah, so that bottom one is just when he wakes up. He's his roommate. He's got a big jock roommate that wears ridiculous like boxer shorts and comes in to save him from his dreams a couple of times. Yeah. Um, but he's like wondering what happened. Like, would the blackbird have been able to take Noel to another what dimension? realm level of hell oh that's interesting because it's you know that's asking questions about ucn yeah because we don't know if it's hell we don't know if it's a dimension he realized ian was waiting for him to say something thanks ian i was stuck in a really nasty nightmare you got me out of it just to emphasize uh, we tried to show the bite-sized portion of it but again and again and again in the story it talks about the nightmares yeah nightmares and nightmares and he sees he sees black the blackbird everywhere um he tries to atone for it ultimately and to me, again, like, because it's, like, people, you know, I'm sure a lot of people were like, why a bird? Why a black bird? And I'm like, you know, there's nobody else these characters are associated with. You know, like, it's got to be Henry's family. Yeah. Um, that's who it has to be. And if that's the person that's associated with Nightmare, you know. Yep. And, yeah, so there's, there's a discussion of vengeance and revenge on bullies and whatever. That comes up a couple of times in Blackbird, but here's just a couple of quotes on it. Um, yeah, and the bottom one is the final, one of the final lines of the story as well. <laughs> yeah, so at the end, um, it turns out, um, well, essentially what happens yeah. is um, Noel um, goes to the original person that he harmed, because it wasn't Sam. He tries to apologize to Sam. He's like, I'm sorry, yeah, Sam. Uh, yeah, and <laughs> and um, just to the universe. And uh, it doesn't help. It doesn't do anything. No. And uh, he, it suggested to him, maybe you need to go back and atone for what you originally did. Yeah. Maybe that's the real problem. Um, which, again, you know, I don't think Mike has hurt 
um, is the one responsible for no. Sammy's death. Yeah, so um, it wouldn't it help. Be, and when we see them a lot of he times, he needs to deal with his brother. Sammy and Mike are like bros, but th there is a bully character. We think that is William, and so um, or for Sam's bully. But he says, um, "I never ask you when he, I ask you, you had secrets." And all waited. Sam leaned in. Remember, I said I was bullied. Well, I got revenge on one of my bullies by bullying him right back. I played a really mean joke on him just before freshman year. And so. the really mean joke is ostensibly the spring lock. Yeah. The, like the Springlock murder where he gets put back in the suit we'll and see in another that. story um a similar thing again but um yeah so i think you know he took revenge um then that's his secret that he's vengeful it's right there in the story it's interesting it's as well because when he goes back to to apologize to christine the girl that he bullied she's kind of like whatever and she has big like big charlotte energy where she's kind of like oh right okay whatever yeah I'm better now. I don't. I'm not scared of you. You have no power over me. Lot. She said she has a lot of other bullies as yeah, well. Yeah, she's like there were other people who bullied me. What one were you? Yeah. He thinks he's like super special in her life, but she's like actually loads of people bullied me, and you're just another one. Mm -hmm. Which for Charlotte is interesting because she did have a lot of bullies because they put her in the rain. Yeah. You know, like we don't know. Like, and she's like, oh, William, well, you're just get in line. You know, there were plenty of people that hated me, and I was only a little girl. You know. Mm -hmm. But I'm something else better now because yeah. obviously, like Christine is really successful when he meets her. She's the daughter of a restaurant owner. Yeah, and she's like yeah. she's and she's like doing like I think it's dance. Yeah. So um yeah so that's the 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 line that it ends on. Um Sam says one of the blackbird's lines. Uh, the blackbird will make you tell. Sam said <laughs> that's his because that's his character. And Noel stuttered, but then Sam laughed. Ultimately, um Sam and Noel make up. This is one of the guns with a good ending. Um, yeah, this one Noel actually. Repents. This is one of the ones where I actually got teary when mm -hmm. he came back because I was like invested in the friendship and whatever. And then he comes back and he's like, I'm fine. And then he's like, like makes fun of Noel for being scared of him. Yeah. Like he's like, yeah. Which is interesting because it's again, like no has a lot of like no has no no has a lot of like Mike energy in this as well, where he's kind of jockish, mm -hmm. and he kind of gets punished, and he's like, "Why am I being punished for being a bully?" And it's like because you were a bully, <laughs> and then he apologizes, and then he's like, "Yeah, like he feels a lot better." He's like, but and, and the implication is, yeah, that what Sam did was like a really mean joke. Like the other bully did not come out as well as no. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, it separates it out. Um, there's, I think, is there another? There's some more slides that talk about why we other we, we think that. It's, yeah, uh, we we'll, we'll come back to the Noel theme. Is... We come back to the the theme of vengeance later on, um, vengeance against bullies. Once we go through some of the other stories, yeah. um, but this is just to show you, like Blackbird also has that all through it, like vengeance, vengeance and guilt is ultimately, um, yeah, and that's that's Noel. also yeah no. No admitting that he was a bully. He's like, maybe I was around 12. I was a bully. And that's what sets Sam off. Sam's like, oh! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which if he's, you know, if Mike's our FNAF 4 protagonist, then all that lines up. And then we'll see again why we think, you know, Mike, FNAF 4. There's another quote. Yeah. Okay. They're talking about the set of their movie. Okay, so we're thinking bedroom, right? Sam stood in the middle of the set. Nightmares, night terrors, cold sweats, paranoid self-defense, panicked phone calls. Yep, I think it's the ultimate set in a film for a one-room set. Uh-huh, yeah. Um, <laughs> clearly a FNAF 4 Also, reference. night terrors, we literally have we literally have night terrors as a game in Help Wanted. Yeah. Um, almost, yeah. almost, like, pretty much, I feel like this whole thing could be solved with just this um, story, honestly. I think this story, you can pretty much, you, you can get it. But... Um, Scott does not leave us with just this, and we have a lot of other things that build up on uh, Sammy's character and uh, and stories he shows up in. So. Yeah, yeah. There's just tons and tons and tons. And again, we spent ages tearing this down to the most basic parts because there is so you much. Should, you should read material. this story if you're, if you're or definitely or yeah. If you want story. to, if you want to, if you want to see Sam reread this story because you get to meet him basically. And Mike. Um, and Mike. Yeah, a good look at Mike. We don't have a lot of looks at Mike. And mm -hmm. I'm like, if you read these stories with an open mind, like being like, okay, story, tell me about Mike, then you can find out a lot about these characters um, and you get a feel for them. Like the fine details might not all line up because it's an analog, but you get the, the feel, the heart of these characters. Mm -hmm. And it's so good because we're given so little yeah. um, in like other media. So definitely like, don't just listen to the like, oh, this is literal. These are just kids. Go in and go, tell me about the character I care about. And these stories will tell you about the characters you care about. Yeah. Like, it's a, it's a really good look at things. Uh, so, we've got a slide that's just talking about Nightmare. 
Yeah, so I mentioned this um, a little bit in the mask video. I'll go over it again. How um, Shadow, um, so in the FNAF 4 files, we're talking about FNAF 4 again, um, Nightmare is also called like Shadow Freddy. And it's easy to see why these two characters would be this. People were like, what? The Shadow and the Nightmares? What? But really, we can see why those two characters would be the same because Shadow Freddy is an exact copy of Withered Golden Freddy. He has the exact same pose, um, the, his ear is missing, he has the wires out of his eye socket. So he's just a, a, a copied recolor. And we know of... that Golden Freddy is definitely a Fredbear costume. Yeah, like, like, yeah. like, it's not even me being like, oh, confirmed, whatever. Like, we know this, we see it in multiple situations. Yeah. There are multiple stories that describe it as a Fredbear costume. We see it in the novels. Mm -hmm. That's a Fredbear costume because they specifically talk about his yellow fur mm -hmm. in relation to Spring Bonnie. Just to establish that. So again, we have Fredbear and Fredbear. Fredbear and Fredbear. Yeah. So people call him Golden Freddy, but he is Fredbear. He's a Fredbear costume. And we see a Shadow Fredbear costume. And right. then we have a Nightmare Fredbear costume and... Nightmare is a shadow version. Yeah, a shadowy version. Again, it's exact. And we so again, distinguishing him, you know, is it maybe it's just a Freddy? Um, we have Freddy is very different. He has the freddles. Um, he has a different design, and he's specifically Fred in both these iterations. He has specific details where he's specifically a shadow copy or a shadow version of uh, Fred Bear. Specifically, and Nightmare Fred Freddy. Bear is all teeth. He has multiple sets of mouths. Um, and we see the so there's a the part where. And Orville and um, Mr. Hippo, where he's talking about how Orville was like, are you in the jaws of a beast, friend? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And we specifically see the jaws of a beast used as a metaphor for his torment. And he literally has jaws all over him. And he's kind of an evil twin, not to be cliche. It's kind of an evil twin, of an eviler twin character. Yeah. Um, we have the uh, Nightmare Plush as well, which is called Nightmare Plush, rather than just Nightmare Ion, which is a twin of like an evil twin of the puppet, um, which is interesting. Um, but so just to tie it all together, you know, as, as far another as the... design thing, just to point out myself, eye size is important. So Golden Freddy has tiny little pinprick eyes. Yeah. Um, Night Marion has large white circle eyes, pretty large, like yeah, yeah, yeah. On, on the scheme of things. Right. And so does Shadow Freddy, and I always, I always wondered yeah. why he had the larger white eyes. Scott's really picky about the eyes, mm -hmm. and I always wondered why he had that, but it ties him to Nightmare. Yeah, so um, so just from what we know, right, so we know that Andrew gives William the nightmares. We know that um, the, so we know that And we know that Michael might also suffer from those same torment nightmares it's a by mistake, you know, almost by mistake, you know, like, he's haunted by the blackbird but it's not really the blackbird's intent you know in that story um it feels like mike is punished, also punished they're, they're both yeah. punished for their guilty actions for, for but deeds but we get the feeling the that mike is definitely penitent for what happened yeah like he's devastated by it. we see it at the end of like fnaf 4 where he says i'm sorry directly to yeah, his yeah. brother like there is no hesitation in him he's like i'm sorry for this you know he's like i'm just a kid um but whether william is sorry is a little bit more We'll see. Mm, yeah, we don't know because um, there are stories where like he's like 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 what's maybe the, I shouldn't have done yeah what's this the what's thing? the one like it is, it's it's hide and seek call? it's hide and seek oh, okay where he says he's like I'm <laughs> so speak. sorry I'm so so sorry fuck you presses the button yeah to, like, yeah. yeah he's like b destroys the game and yeah. and the I'm gonna win yeah Forget I'm gonna it. win yeah and that's how we think potentially UCN happened where like I think well I think UCN probably ended with William being like. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry, Vengeful Spirit. I've I've re repented for all my sins, mm -hmm. and then he's like considers it, and then he's like, ha ha, sake. Yeah. And then yeah. But we see as but well we don't know. in the Blackbird story, you know, Nightmare clearly represented by the Blackbird ties into crows, and he puts on the costume, feels like he becomes it. We're not sure what happens in the story. In the story, I mean, it was about he was lying in a ditch. What happened to the costume? We don't know. Was the costume infused with agony and it pursued Mike? Was it Sam? Sam's ominous line at the end where he's giving the Blackbird lines. There's yeah. some blurring overlap. But either way, um, yeah, we think that this is the this is the solution for that. But besides besides the solving part of it, um, it means we have some real good insight into Sammy as a character, which is the really exciting part um, because there's a lot more information on him um, in the frights because we see several stories with him. And he has a character. Um, he's a well-developed little character and it's good um yeah so. yeah so so in blackbird again at the very beginning we see devon and devon tells a story oh. in class uh new kid oh new new kid sorry i've just left the wrong thing oh, whoops. So. yeah it's new kid 
Um, I just used a Blackbird slide, <laughs> is all. Um, yeah, so it's in the new kid with Devin and Mike. So this is Devin. Devin at the start is telling the story in class and scaring the entire class with it. Um, yeah, we said Devin was kind of a little like a little psychopath. Yeah. Um, That's so, how the story starts. Yeah, so in this one, like, it's weird. He's telling a story about two kids. Twins. Be, yeah, two kids, twins being consumed by a creature or whatever. You know, like, it's mm-hmm. just... Yeah, so he's like, now little Haley's crawling into the bounce house. She's the first one, the first one in. Her twin sister, Hope, is right behind her. But in a second, Hope is going to wish she didn't follow her sister. In a second, she's looking down as she crawls inside. But now she's in, she looks up and sees her sister's partially eaten body lying still on the red vinyl. No, wait, the vinyl isn't red. It's covered in blood. Was that a squeal Devin heard? He kept reading. And the house isn't a house. It's a big mouth. And the mouth is chewing and now it's opening wider and Hope now screaming is sliding into it. That's enough, Mrs. Patterson shouted. Devin blinked. He still didn't look up. He wasn't finished. And this is an implication that Sam could have come looking. This is one of the first stories. So, like, we know in the novel that Charlie is absolutely consumed by the need to go back, go back, go back, go back to Hurricane, go Mm -hmm. back, go back, go back to Freddy's Mm -hmm. because she thinks her brother's there. And yes, we find out that that could potentially be related to her like desire to go back to the closet to grow up or whatever. But we also don't know, like taking just Sammy and Charlotte, the original Sammy and Charlotte, mm-hmm. does Sammy feel compelled? With Charlotte in the puppet. Yeah, does he feel compelled to does go Charlotte back to Fredbear's because she's in the puppet because she's still semi alive? Yeah. Because they talk about like and again, and there's plenty of stories in this where they literally talk about the connection that twins have. Yeah. They even have stories about that where they talk about that. And, and did did you know that he wasn't finished? Did William did William was was William fine? He killed Charlotte and then he was like, oh well, so I guess. She and again, we spe- again just, we specifically have lines from William where he says we have to repeat the experiment to find out how it was done. Yeah, he literally says that. And, and he and says as, we have to. And, and how better to repeat an experiment than sci- someone's I- exact twin? If you're a scientist, no, they're not identical twins. No, no, but even then, like a twin is as close as you're gonna get. Yeah, you know, like to someone else. Like scientists are like great. You know, we can give this person an electrode. We can give them conditions. an electrode on each finger, and we know that they've roughly had the same upbringing and whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, and this is also interesting because, again, it, it, it compels... If you took this as him going back to Freddy's, it compels Freddy's to a mouth. Yeah. Are you in the jaws of a beast? Are you trapped at Freddy's? Are you trapped this is, this in is this? This is the Golden Freddy story as well, um, and it's the one where crows show up um, and twins. Um, yep. Yep. So and this is just a... God, there are so many so twins. So many twins. So many. I don't even and think this is all of them. Like, this is just the most important some one. Some of them just quick... No, yeah. Um, Like, Minnie and Cindy are described as twin-like. Um, So there's also characters that are brothers and sisters that are probably Sammy and... We, we stuck to, like, these are just the bare basics. Uh, some of the twins characters. And they're often, whenever we see a Mike or a crying child character, they're the twins next door or across the street. Yeah. The implication is that they yes. all live near each other in like hurricane yes. at the time. So depending on some how the story is about, some of these stories feature the twins in a lot more detail. Felix the Shark and the Breaking Wheel, big are big stories that are about the twins. Yeah. Um, but um in the other ones they have some more cameo roles. So we'll just talk about some of them. Yeah, um, so the real Jake, it's the twins across the street, Ellie and Evie or Evie. I don't know how you say that. Evie. Mm-hmm. Evie like Evie, I don't know. Um Evie. well they are. And is that not the one where they have the piñata? Is it the no, new? That's no, that's that later. That's the last one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the twins across the street. They have oh, a weird. They yeah. have a weird laugh, like a cuckoo that he can recognize, um, like a cuckoo clock or something, um, yeah. which is odd. But uh, yeah, those are across from Jake. And then Felix the shark. How long are you two gonna do that? Jenny's twin, Gordon asked. That's because there's two. So we meet a D and D group. And it's just a nerd Nerds group that play D and D. Actually, some of the oldest characters in the frights that we actually meet. You know, like they're older. Yeah, Gordon and Jenny are. Uh, we get a lot more detail on Felix Shark. One of my favorites. It starts the big D and D kind of section, but only it's crocodile caverns and crocodiles or whatever. Yeah, and one of the characters is like really likes Jenny, but Gordon is there and he has to put up with Gordon because Gordon's Jenny's twin. Uh huh. Yeah. And Gordon's like makes fun of him and whatever. Yeah. Um, which is again a dynamic we see again. You know, we see it multiple times <laughs> that he's like, I like the girl twin, but boy twin is rude. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, in the breaking wheel, the first week of class, Shelley's twin brother and Reed's other best friend, Pickle, had post posited, "Who better to teach robotics than AI?" So the 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 breaking wheel, Pickle, 
that was the that was the story that convinced me that Sammy was. We'll talk was about a thing. pickle. Or we'll talk about the breaking wheel a little bit more. This one is an, a more in depth look at yeah. the twins. Um, the main character is Reed. We think again another Mike character. And, Definitely big big Mike um, energy. This because he's not he's. He's not super talented and genius like everybody else. He does seem more intelligent than he gives himself credit for, mm-hmm. but he's very kind of like slacker esque and whatever. And again, even the Mike we see in the the movie is kind of like dropout energy. You know, he's like, I just can't do anything. And a lot of times, um, and there's a there's a William character in this as well. Um, and um, as we see again, like we said, um, a lot of times when Sammy and Mike are shown in the frights, they're kind of friends, they're kind of buddies. But um, William is Sam's bully. Yeah. Um, and Pickles bully. And he's here. usually given like Julius, Julian, J. Well, kind we of have names. a few names. Yeah. So there's a couple of names kicking around, but we do we'll see Ju- the... we do see Julius and Julian and we'll, stuff. We'll talk about up. the breaking wheel and somnophobia. Um, but yeah. yeah. But yeah, so basically this that was the one the twins in this were the ones that made me finally go, Okay, like this is too much. He's a real character. It's too much. And anybody I've ever spoken to about it is like, Okay, what? Yeah. Like and, like it's the ones that I'm like people need to read this and be like, yeah. Okay, look at these twins as Henry's twins. Um so the new kid, Devin was listening to Heather talk to her girlfriends. She was complaining about her four year old twin sisters, Haley and Hope. So that was the twins that were in that story. He kills he um Devin kills them in his story to impress Heather. Yeah, he um, wants her he wants her to notice them, so he makes a graphic story about like chewing them up. Because yeah, she, she because she's she like they're she's like they're mildly inconvenient and he's like, oh, I will I, destroy I'll them. I know, I'll I'll kill you I'll kill your twin sisters in the story. And it's like and it's absolutely like terrifying me. to me because it's like what if Henry was like, Oh, I'm I'm really overwhelmed with my kids, they're really I don't like them, I, I wish they would go away, I feel like I can't get to work and Henry's and William's like Okay, it's it's a really it's terrifying, um, like not a great because again, like it's the it's a very cold sociopath, like solutions. where he's like, I'll fix it. Yeah, you you don't like this, I'll fix it. It's also like a robot solution, you know, like yeah. human unhappy. I I solved, and we see it happen in Fetch. Yeah, where he thinks this is annoying or whatever, and then they're dead. Yeah, or I would like this finger, and then literally the finger, and he's like, no. Mm-hmm. So the input, and and again, like we know that William was in fetch. So there's a lot of weird things about maybe William Twisted misunderstood. Maybe he misunderstood the request a little, <laughs> little bit. <laughs> but um, but yeah, so the twins in there end up chewed up and dead because of him. We don't um, but what we actually we don't see the we last never, we never, fate. He doesn't get to finish yeah, his story. Yeah, sliding into about which is part of I think the mystery like I think it's the question like what like, did what happen to Sammy, but I think we know what happened yeah. to Sammy. And then under construction, as always, the Davis twins, Towheaded Wesley and Wendy, swinging in unison, <laughs> were the ones who cracked the paper mache open. Then they fought each other for a first grab at the candy. Everyone else hung back. The tall and gangly 13-year-old competitions were infamous. It was best not to get in their way. <laughs> so, like, this is this one's one of my favourites. It's absolutely hilarious. The idea of, like, Charlotte and <laughs> um, Sammy fighting over the candy, which is potentially William. You know, we don't know. We don't, you know, It could be anything. It could be Remnant. anything. Remnant. could be whatever. But I just like the idea of them fighting over William's soul at one yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, or William, yeah. Um, and yeah, it was best not to get in their way. And we literally have a line from Charlotte where she says, "Like I don't hate you, but you need to stay out of my way." Like she's not mad at William. She's like, she's like, I recognize you, but I'm not afraid of you. Not anymore. Mm-hmm. Is one of the lines as well. Um, but this it it groups them together. Both twins are something that you shouldn't get in their way. Both yeah. of them are busy about both their business. Both of them, yeah. Both of them are like, don't mess with these kids. Don't Which mess with these twins. Yeah, and I'm like, good. But yeah, as you can see, there are twins everywhere. Everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. God told us, look to the stories in order to solve some of the things in the past. Like, specifically, the frights are there to help us solve um, the game. And so, like, why mention twins repeatedly or use twins as a theme? If Sammy was, And it's, like, like thematically... It's, not like, it's like, if you look character. for twins, Nightmare on and Marionette. Yeah, yeah. And the two of them look so similar and yet are different creatures, different looking, different Purposes. attitudes. Yeah. Because like but we see like Charlotte talk and she's very calm and nice mm-hmm. and Night Marion's like again and again and mm-hmm. again. Uh-huh. Yeah, like and so in Security Breach we have a lore cabinet. So basically in Security Breach, the arcades were all drawn by Steel Wool people. So all the Steel Wool artists and stuff all got a chance to make an arcade cabinet. And then Scott provided his own artist's art and cabinet form. And in this case, it was Lady Fizzy, 
who is now kicked out on the curb. But the value of these um, cabinets is also very interesting because they would have been overseen by Scott. Mm -hmm. um, basically, we saw from the Steel Wool um, interview that that's how it worked. He His artists he worked with, they didn't work with his artists. They mm -hmm. were provided this stuff. So this is a more direct, like, Scott-linked cabinet than the other ones that are fun and whatever, but not necessarily of value in terms of law. This one's interesting because it's butter versus pickles. Butter, exotic butters. So in sister location, Mike wins exotic butters. Even though he would probably... he We know he would rather have the cash basket because we see him in the security logbook saying, cash basket, please, but he gets exotic butters. Yeah. Um, and the pickles are associated with Henry because in FNAF 6, uh, it's his his pizzeria franchise that he's trying to lure people in to run and in FNAF 6 if you buy every single thing in the in the catalogue you unlock the pickles yeah and the pickles have a stat that no other item has which is happiness mm -hmm. one happiness and knowing Henry's character and the fact that he is intensely depressed intensely sad these pickles give him like a small iota of happiness so yeah i think we can just see like pretty uh pretty and then yeah visually visually got... the um exotic butters are linked to sister location which is kind of william's lair yeah that's, that's william's, william's labs home base and, it, um, and we know it is william's labs as well because again like in the novels um when um I think when see when baby comes to visit him and well, not about baby Elizabeth comes mm -hmm. to visit him and she brings the the picture she drew. Yeah, she comes down into the labs for that. Yeah, um, and uh, we see in the opening you know, they're talking about Afton and like, talking about all oh, these designs of yours. Um, so that's an it's very it's you know everything's horrible down there. It's very big Afton energy, um, sister location, and then um, I think. Pizza Simulator is obviously big Henry energy. Henry's kind of um, founded this project and wants you to put up this pizzeria. And there's kind of, you can see kind of how the business would have started um, at the beginning at Fred Bear's and everything else, how like you would build up your own franchise. Um, and so I think, yeah, for sure we can see kind of some William versus Henry vibes with this, but also associates pickles with Henry's family. Not that like, I mean, if they're twins, so it's like really obvious, but also associating pickles with Henry's family, I think. And you get an achievement called Posh Pizzeria if you buy the pickles. Yeah. But yeah, they, they have a high happiness stat that does nothing. It doesn't give you any bonuses in the game, but it's presumably important to Henry. And we literally have... A, a, a robotics genius twin called Pickles or Pickle sorry mm -hmm. um, his actual name is Dilbert yeah. so it's a joke like Dill Pickle but yeah so we have that and that's why this one was interesting to me because again it ties Pickles to Henry to Henry's family and the butters to Mike and again even in Security Breach we see the exotic butters again they're on top of the television yeah help one of no, I mean in Purple Man Room. Are they not in there? Oh, yeah. I don't know. I can't remember. But I, think I know they're they in Help be. Wanted as well. Yeah, they're definitely in Help Wanted because you can get them. Yeah. Um, and so from what we see from about the Sammy character, one of the other things that we see repeated is conspiracies. So he's a conspiracy nut. He likes puzzles. Um, yeah, which is, uh, which he's a kind of a puzzle character and he's kind of a conspiracy thing character. You know, you know, I'm like, no, oh, Sammy exists. And it's like, uh, so, but um, but we see the, the Sammy character involved in conspiracies and puzzles. Um, so uh, yeah, the breaking wheel. So Pickle was convinced Miss Billings was an android for weeks. He'd been devising a plan to prove his hypothesis because so far the plan involved cutting into Mrs. Billings. Shelley wouldn't let Pickle go forward with it. So that Shelley's <laughs> again the plan... again the disagreement. <laughs> like he's like we should just cut the teacher, and she's like no. <laughs> he's like what if we just cut the teacher open and then saw our insides? And Shelley's like Pickle. She's like, not oh, Pickle, we can't do that. Let's not. He's like, I'll and... just wait until she cuts herself then. <laughs> and then uh, in Felix the Shark, another set of twins explicitly, a, a set of uh, nerdy twins. Gordon shook his head and took a bite of pizza. Old Man Vance, which is his boss. And, you know, the Mrs. Billings is Pickle's teacher. Old Man Vance is his boss. Old Man Vance is definitely an android. You'll see. Someday one of his customers is going to short out his circuits. He'll be all, he throws his face in a contorted position, and sparks will come out of his ears. You are so beyond weird, there's no words for you, Jenny said to her brother. So again, we have <laughs> Charlotte being like, what? <laughs> yeah, it's always that dynamic where 
Well, like one of the the male twin is like, ha ha ha, I'm gonna do this, and she's like, no, you aren't. She's like, what? Stop! <laughs> what the heck? It's very cute as well. And then, yeah, also consistently we see that Sammy is bullied. Ultimately. He's a victim. Yeah, he's victimized by people around him. And a lot of times, I think bullying him. can mean murder. In yeah. uh, the fights can be a it becomes for... yeah, it becomes paralleled with it because again, we have to take it in the context of like. William considers himself one of the children. We see that specifically. And mm-hmm. to a child, like, the biggest crime is bullying. And we see, like, we see what the result of bullying, right? Like, Charlotte is bullied and then dies. Yeah. Um, Mike bullies his bullies brother. Bullies his brother. Dies. He dies. So uh-huh. we can see this connection between, like, where when sometimes when they're talking about bullying, it could be worse than yeah. what we're talking about. Yeah, it's like this ends in death when it happens. So Pickle, again, a, you know, a twin, care, the male twin. Pickle started trotting up the aisle towards the door as Reed picked up his project and tried to figure out how to shove it into his backpack. He didn't take his eyes off Pickle as he folded and refolded the project's robotic arms, so he saw when Julia stuck out his foot and tripped Pickle. Pickle, who wasn't the most coordinated kid anyway, lost his balance and flew forward into the desk in front of Julius. Pickle's big nose led the way wherever his face went, so his nose took the brunt of the impact when it hit the corner of the desk. Blood spurted from Pickle's nostrils as Julius snorted out a high-pitched laugh. Also... The nose thing is really important. And the next one you'll see it, but they do discuss Pickle having a beak, a beaky nose, which, which is the crow I thing didn't, again. I didn't tie it in specifically to crows. But, but it is see, really um, bird, very... A lot of bird... Um, like you'll see in the next one, like it's very, very bird-heavy imagery and metaphor. Also, Julius having an annoying laugh. Uh, we see William analogues described as having an annoying laugh yeah. a lot. Um, so later on... Um, yeah, so later on they go back to their house and they're like getting um, a bit so of... So essentially like, um, um, he stays behind. Um, Pickle... So in fact, just to give an overview of this story. Yeah. Um, Reed is in a robotics class. His best friends are robotic geniuses. Twins. Um, twins and they're, they've got an, an idiot guy in the class who's not, who's smart, but is just rude and mean and, yeah. and it's Julius. Um, and he's handsome and wears like an ascot and whatever. Mm-hmm. Um... And he pe- he picks on Pickle. Um, Reed likes his Reed likes Pickle's sister, but is friends with Pickle. Mm-hmm. He he gets feeling like I wish I could be in a relationship with. Is it Shelley? Shelley doesn't notice him. But at all. Shelley She's is a, reading, Shelley's like, too books. busy. She's reading books about medieval, <laughs> medieval torture, torture yeah. and literally goes into like graphic detail about torture things when she's talking to Reed like yeah. oh here's the pair of despair where they like and it's like whoa <laughs> yeah um but yeah. So later on, they go back to their house well, because. So so first, what's happened is um my or well um. Oh yeah Reed... yeah yeah you have to talk yeah yeah so right. so yeah yeah so Reed Reed is Reed goes Reed stands up to Julia for bullying Pickle. He stays back after class um and he's like oh what are you talking about what are you laughing about and um Julius gets electrocuted and then <laughs> Reed like takes his chance and locks him into. No no it's not even it's, he does it to himself. So, like, what happens is he... So, Julius is, like... He's, like, look at this exosuit I am making. Yeah. Um, which is obviously, like, absolutely, like, the spring trap suit. It, it's an external suit, robot suit, that will make him stronger. And he's, like, I'm going to make this suit, and then I'm going to put you in this suit, make and you're going to do anything that I tell you. You're like going to be my... Monkey. You're going to be my servant. Yeah. And he's, like... And he puts it on to show him it, and then he gets electrocuted. Yeah. Um, and basically slumps in his chair. I think Reed rushes forward and then straps him in. Yeah, no, no, he, yeah, he slumps forward in his chair, and rather than get help for the, his classmate that's just been electrocuted, Reed goes, I'm going to keep him here, and buckles like the, his arms to his legs so he can't move in the chair. And then leaves. And then leaves. So this is back on the bus. Um, so he's he hasn't told anybody, he's just locked him in this suit and left, and uh, he gets back on the bus. Yeah. So um, he gets there and they sit. They sit at the little loner part of the bus. I think he sits next to Pickle because she has like um, Shelley has her bag on the chair next to her with all her books. She's like doesn't have anybody next to her. Um, so it's Reed looked at Pickle's nose. It was hard not to, red and swollen, smeared with blood. Pickle's nose was more prominent than ever, and now he had little white tissue rolls sticking out of each nostril. Given that his nose was beaky, Pickle looked like a big bud sucking up white worms. Does it hurt? Reed asked. Pickle, as usual, was doing some kind of numbers puzzle. He glanced up at Reed. Huh? Reed pointed at his nose. Pickle made a funny cross-eyed face in an attempt to look at his injured beak. 
Reed suppressed a smile. Pickle shrugged. Yeah, not the first time, though. I can ignore it. Sorry. Why? What did you do? Nothing. Pickle returned to his puzzle. So like we said, in Blackbird, um, he attempts to apologize to Sam. Um, and he says, Sam, you know, please forgive me. And it doesn't do anything because, again, um, he's not uh, Sam's bully. And here For me, see... this is also an interesting set of lines. Mm -hmm. Because if this was Mike, it's like, what did you do? Nothing. Like, I didn't stop what happened. He, mm -hmm. He's very guilty about stuff. Yeah, that as well. Yeah, that, that's... Like, for me, it does very, there's a very poignant element to that. Like, what did you do? Nothing. Yeah. Like, I didn't stop him. Yeah. And we don't know if Mike was aware of what William was up to because there's an implication that at some point, William had custody of all the kids. Yeah. And was still doing stuff. Yeah. And did the kids know? Did Mike suspect something? It's like, what did you do? Nothing. You know, we don't know how far that goes. We don't know how deep that goes. We but, don't know how deep Mike, but, Michael's guilt goes. But Scott does but, stop at, did Michael murder No, the no, kids? I, I definitely do not think Sammy? Michael, but I think he might have suspected things and been like, yeah. I could have stopped this yeah. somehow. Or actively helped, like, William get away with things yeah. by peripheral things. Like yeah, like, helping. like William being like, okay, I want you to go hack these animatronics or whatever. Or, yeah, take a, take another shift for me. Yeah, yeah, cover um, the cover the night shift, cover the day shift, and Mike would be like, okay, he does as he's told. But didn't and actually And maybe murder. suspected something yeah. was going on, but didn't understand or the maybe, extent of it. Or maybe did know. Yeah, but wasn't um, involved. But wasn't so... himself doing it, yeah. yeah. We don't know Mike's yeah, involved. We don't know how we... far, but, but Scott... I think there's a lot more to his guilt than just his brother, feel, I think. We feel like Scott stops with, you know, like... Um, William... Mike isn't a murderer. William calls... He's not actively a murderer. He's someone who follows. William calls out to Henry and Mike both for help mm -hmm. um, when he's in um, UCN. And we get the impression that maybe at both times, you know, both characters have in some ways covered up for William or, you know, yeah. been Williams well, turned the blind eye. Or lackeys or turned yeah. the blind eye. But, um, but we also get the strong impression throughout these stories that William and Henry or Mike and Henry did not participate yeah. in the murders themselves. They may have, they may have tolerated things or helped to cover things up, but they did not kill the children. Yeah. Except and they're, Mike. and they're also kind of atoning for it. Yeah, but oh, Mike again. It was like it was almost with his brother. Yeah, he had a like a but, peripheral. But not murdering. Yeah, it was like additional murder. And then there's more bullying, obviously. So as you may have noticed, um, so in um, uh, the breaking wheel we had um Pickle and his best friend Reed and his bully Julian. Now in Somnophobia we have Sam, uh, who has his best friend Rad and his bully Jules. Um, names are very similar again. Again, just showing like Sam Pickle, this this twin character. Sam is not a twin in Somnophobia, but there's a whole bunch of things that kind of put it back um, to this character. And again, Somnophobia it deals again with dreams, nightmares. Um, yep, Sam um, being the main character of the story. This is another big Sam story. And the Billy being Jules. That's why I said yeah, Jules yeah. versus Julian. Yep, I know. Stupid spam calls. Right. Right. So um, it says, Jules must not have liked what Rad had said, or maybe it had too much to drink because he took the cup Lydia had brought for Sam and shoved it in Sam's face. Here, Sam, some of this will help you relax. Sam quick attempted to block Jules's hand, but the drink splashed into Sam's mouth and down his shirt anyway. Sam quickly stood and pushed Jules away. The cup fell to the ground, spilling liquid in a small puddle. He tasted the artificial sourness of the drink, spat it out on the ground, then swiped at his mouth with the back of his hand. Jules and Bogart laughed. Here we have um, the bully forcing him to take something that he doesn't want to take. We think, we think... And we, ha and we have a lot of very strong... So, like, in um, Mr. Hippo and Orville, they talk about lemonade and stuff. There are... We have a lot of, like, extensive... Like, extended metaphors about drinks being paralleled with potentially remnant and whatever. Yeah, intake food. So that's why, we're, that's why we go, oh, this could be remnant. It's because we have other other reasons to And we to have think other that. characters, you know, like at the end of The Fourth Closet, um, William forces Carlton, you know, yeah. he injects yeah, injects remnant, remnant into, remnant into, into him. We think maybe Sammy would have had, might have had um, agony injected or forced into him at some point against his will. Yeah. Um, and that that create, and that's why he's like such a nightmarish, weird, agony like creature, partially. Yeah. So, um, yeah, somnophobia, yeah, they're, they're later talking about what they did. What's the big deal, Jules asked. It was a joke. A giant joke with people all the time. You don't see anyone else throwing temper tantrums. It wasn't funny, Jules, especially to Sam. That's a conversation yeah. we have in Blackbird, yeah. um, that it wasn't funny. Um, 
Uh, it's not a joke, Sam. And this exact conversation with Blackbird because its character name is the same as well. Like, the bullying wasn't funny. And then, um, yeah, so, and then Blackbird, yeah, where we see um, Sam kept pacing, then he ab abruptly stopped. Unless you're blind, you have to have noticed I'm not a normal looking guy, right? I was bullied basically from the time I entered first grade until I got to my freshman year in high school. Then that year, well, that year it stopped. But I can tell you those jokes you think are so funny. They're not funny to the people on the receiving end of them. Sam crossed his arms and glared at no. He's like, he's oh, like, it stopped. He's like, it stopped because I did something. That's right. Um, I, I guess, I, yeah, I included it good. Um, but yeah, same kind of, he, he's a character that's bullied. Just a bit ominous. And then, yeah, consistently Sammy is uh, a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just a cute. I wish there were more cute um, character moments that we could have included in this one. We may mostly focus on the proof, maybe in another video. But I, um, he's such a cute character. Um, it's really, really good. So these are just some cute like things about like yeah, him being a nerd. Yeah. So do you want me? Yeah, yeah, you can read him. So flipping the switch just inside the doorway of Pickle's room, Reed gratefully let the dark left the dark hall and entered his friend's domain. Stuff with books, CDs, and scientific equipment. Pickle's room more resembled a laboratory than a bedroom. Only the twin bed with its constellations bedspread suggested the room belonged to a boy just into his teens. The rest of the space screamed genius. Reed crossed to Pickle's wall-to-wall -wall bookshelf. He went to the section where he knew Pickle kept fiction. Pickle read more non-fiction than fiction, but he did have a selection of sci-fi books he claimed were as educational as many of his science books. And the constellations is interesting. Because again, we have, there are links to the stars, star systems, star like mm -hmm. groupings. Charlie, Endings. John's like, that that star system is blah. And Charlie's like, it's not, it's something else. Yeah, you we, know? Think, we think probably the twins are interested. Uh, I think, yeah, Henry. like Henry and stuff. Again, Utah has beautiful night skies, like yeah. really, really beautiful. So I think, yeah, they do like a bit of stars. They do like a bit of space. Again, Freddy in space is linked to that. Yeah, we didn't they... include it as well, but um, the walls of his room are black, and which is an odd choice. And uh, his Shelly, his sister's rooms are green, associated with life. I think it literally says and also the associated bracelet. with life. Also yeah. the bracelet that yeah, she was wearing. That's what she says, that she wants it to be green, yeah, associated yeah. with life. And his are black, associated with, I would say, agony. So... <laughs> yeah, he's he's just gangly as well, like Blackbird, where mm -hmm. he's like, no managed to look cool and confident. Sam wondered how he pulled that off so easily. Feeling like the nerd he was, Sam tried to adjust his long legs to fit another of the cheap plastic chairs. And then, yeah, somnophobia. Sam was fine sitting alone. He didn't really talk to other classmates unless it involved school and mainly just hung out with his small group of friends. He wasn't the best at small talk anyway, and he was used to other kids ignoring him or not really being interested in what he had to say. Sam accepted that he was somewhat of an odd one out in high school. He didn't do sports, he didn't join clubs, he had a specialised diet, and he only wore certain cotton fabrics because polyester made him break out. He was set in his ways and he rarely tried new things. He admittedly considered everything that could go wrong before he decided to do something. Instead of thinking of all the things that could go right, but his way of living made him feel comfortable, so he accepted that about himself. It was just that others rarely did. Well, besides Rad. So yeah, here we have another situation. He's kind of a fearful character. He's his he's very anxious. about his father who has died. Yeah. Um, there's some interesting details about that as well. Um, yeah, which again makes us ask the question, like, how did Sam cope with his dad vanishing and whatever? Yeah. And um, but here again, you know, his his best friend is Rad. Um, just like Pickle's best friend is Reed. Um, just some cute insight on the the characters. Um, he's kind of like a little persnickety little guy. Yeah, he's very picky. He likes things just so and whatever. And then yeah, this is more vengeance on bullies. Uh huh. Um, this from somnophobia again. Yes, Jules was strong, but in Sam's dream, Jules wasn't stronger than him. They struggled back and forth for a few moments. Then Sam adjusted his wrist and pushed with all he had against Jules's arm. Jules's face turned red and his arm began to shake. Sam gritted his teeth and shoved Jules's hand down on the bleacher and released. Sam wins. Sam's the strongest, Bogart shouted. So he can't beat him in real life. But he um, can beat him in his dreams. Which, if nightmare, again, yeah. Sam, nightmare, dreams. And then the Blackbird line that we've already discussed. Uh-huh. Uh, that, that one's pretty important. 
Yep, the one I got revenge on one of my bullies by bullying him right back. The um, what happens? In, so what happens in the breaking wheel to Pickles' bully is that Julius had been complaining that Pickles' remote was affecting Julius's exoskeleton, and Julius was now locked into that metal frame, his body inextricably linked with its structure, and therefore inextricably linked with its movement. Um, they have a little brother Ori, who yeah, Ori and yeah. Yeah, the, we think it, it's like Greg... uh, like if you can read the breaking wheel, read the breaking wheel and look at it from the point of view of Henry's twins, and they have a little brother called Ori who is like Possibly Gregory. big, big, big Gregory, Golden Ori, Freddy Gregory, energy. Yeah. He wants to torment the little guy, and he it, takes control of the. There's like a little, there's like, uh, basically Pickle made a small man as his like robotics project, and Ori wants to play with it, and is running it around the living room. And um, Shelley has an exact replica of the house that they're in. Mm -hmm. And he keeps ramming the little guy into the house. And she's like, my project. And Pickle's like, don't worry, it won't break your project. And then she settles down. She's like, And then she's like, okay, and goes back to reading her book. And Pickle was like, like, enjoys watching him, like, torment the little dude. And then eventually, like, and so, and the whole time, um... What's his name? The main character in this? Reed. Reed. The whole time Reed is like watching it like, oh, because he thinks that's what's happening to Julius in his exosuit because they're remote. And he's right. And he's right. So, um, so Pic- he's freaking out about it. And then Pickle goes, oh, here, I'll give you something even more fun. Mm-hmm. And unlatches the the joints so that they can all bend backwards. Um, And Reed's watching it like, oh, no. Yeah. And this rips Julius to pieces. Yeah. Um. So it's a group effort. Yeah. Um. However, um. The, Sam is one of the members in that group. It is, is, and as it's like story. it's like almost like for me it's it's definitely like the Council of UCN. Yeah. It's the spirits who are like, yeah, and we're going to torture them. And Charlotte's like, is this going to get in the way of my project, whatever her project is? Mm-hmm. And they're like, nah, it's fine. And she's like, okay, I, mm-hmm. I will allow this. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. But uh, Breaking Wheel is really really interesting. And even the ending is interesting because Reed ends up in the same suit with Julius ultimately. Which in sister location, you know, obviously, like um, he ends yeah, up kind he ends of up with in a... yeah in the same suit like with Arnold. Yeah. So yeah, this one's probably a really long one, but this is only the surface of this theory. We have so much more in this. Um, we had to give, again, spark. So if you just read the stories, again, big ones we would recommend. Blackbird, read Blackbird. Breaking read Wheel. Read Breaking Wheel. New read, Kid. Uh, no, New Kid's not as important. It's not as important, um, but it's a really good It's a really good one to come out with a different attitude. You somnophobia. Know, like, somnophobia. There are more stories. Like, we think, for instance... Um, uh, the animatronic apocalypse. Yeah. Probably is Sammy. Yeah, Hale. because again, he's a conspiracy. Not, he's conspiracy. like, he's like, this is there's a conspiracy that's happening and no one can see it. But for just the stories that like really obviously like the character is just literally Breaking named Wheel. Sam. For me, Breaking Wheel was what changed my mind. Really obviously, it's just two twin characters that are geniuses. Um, yeah, those are the stories that we would recommend looking over. Um, yeah. And definitely, I'm just like Sam is a great character. Even just taking a step back and being like, look at the boundless potential of this character. Look at what he can do. Look at what matters. Because I was always torn. I was always like, the vengeful spirit feels like a nothing character and yet is clearly like the antagonist to William. And he's, you know... There's... And we don't know anything about Cassidy. You know, like Cassidy exists, but we hopefully don't know in what tomorrow. capacity. Yeah, hopefully we'll know more about Cassidy as of Ruin. Um... But yeah, I just wanted to get this out into the world because I feel like we might find out more about Sammy um, and Ruin. If we don't, then whatever. But for me, it's like, it's a character, yeah, that like Shock was Important obsessed with. Yeah. And then I was like, okay. A lot of and people, these like, are, yeah. you know, the shadows for a long time. People have a lot of questions. What's with these characters? Nightmare own. These have been like fan favorite characters, even though they're like, well, but what is he? What's the importance? And this is what we think the importance is. And not yeah. only that, not only is he like a really cool kind of like um, antagonistic um, force that kind of, um, you know, counteracts William, but also through the frights, we see like he's an actual, like he's a little guy. He's Henry's son. He's a genius. Um, he's a nerd. He's awkward. Um, he's doing this, but he's a little. And for me, I'm just like again as a writer. As, as a writer, I'm like, think about how this character must feel. Yeah. 
yeah. like separated from his family, from his history, left only with his mother, with the knowledge that he had a twin that was killed. Would you want to know more about your twin? I would. Yeah. You know, would you want to go back to where it happened? Obviously. You know, like to me, it's like there's there's so much untapped, and people think it's silly because it is silly that it would just end there. You know, like that it's that it's uh, that he just disappears and they're like that was one of, one of people's bigger complaints about Andrew. Like, okay, if the vengeful spirit is Andrew, they're like, but why? What does that add to the story? But this adds so much, you know, and it's also like, does he have the same problems as Henry? Is he a genius? Is he a ro robotics genius? The books seem to imply yes. Yeah. Is he beset by the same problems as Henry? Henry's chased and dogged by depression. depression. Is he also? You know, there's tons of stuff that we just don't know about the twins that make the characters interesting and that make us want to know more. And I want to know more about Sammy and I think that it's a shame that people overlook him because there's so much potential there. In great, terms of, yeah. Great character. Yeah, and again, yeah, it's one that we can't see. I'm like, please, the fan fiction, the fan art, please. Um, I would love to see representations of Sammy um yeah because he's he's this great character yeah and just yeah and there's more information to find out about him and understand about him um and he he exists it's not even we don't even have to make him up yeah. um we don't have to like make up a sammy um he has he has a whole character that's really well defined and written in like a bunch of the stories so yep. yeah so like for this this is a a long a long video but much much shorter than it could be and people i want people to go out and like do their own research on this we'll make another video eventually but I'm like, Sammy exists and he is in the stories. Big and character in the stories. He's a big, a big he's the deal. Vengeful, we think he's the vengeful spirit. Yeah. Um, and that's why all the cupcake stuff all ties back to him ultimately yes, as we well. We have a video about, because talking about um, why if, we think... if, if cupcake represents the vengeful spirit, then that's where Sammy's been hiding a lot of the time as well and always watching. Yep. But um, yeah, ultimately, yeah, there's so much more we could say, but we've probably gone on long enough. <laughs> <laughs> no, enjoy, you know, so uh yeah, hopefully um you can hit the like button if you would like some more content um like this. And uh we do have some more theories um to go. Um this is a big ramble. We're we're hoping we yeah, have so we're many theories, uh -huh. yeah. To just throw out a ruiny video. But yep, we'll see you on the other side of ruin. Yep. Cool. Thanks for listening to us ramble for God knows how long. Yep. Bye.